which was while our constitution does speak about the constituent assembly of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, which was then in contemplation at the date of our constitution on 26th of January 1950. Significantly, after 26th of January 1957, our constitution does not speak of the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir at all. Malone, I'll, I'll, I'll say Malone with great respect. The reason being that the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir, Malone, was a product which was envisaged because there was a constituent assembly. But the way it has happened is the constitution of India, Malone, the applicable provisions were brought into the JNK constitution. And the JNK constitution, Malone, had its own chapters, which I have pointed out for your lordship's consideration. Therefore, establishing its framework. The constitution speaks of only one institution, namely the constitution of India and the constitution of India as it applies to the state of Jammu and Kashmir, subject to modifications and exceptions. That's right. Mahal. Therefore, the only, the only document, the only compact or the only basic uh, document that is, that is within the contemplation of our constitution is this constitution itself. I agree. But Malod, now the question is, was JNK Constituent Assembly not tasked with a framing of a constitution that is clear from sub article 2 of 370? Under 372 and 3, Malod, if your lordship sees both these articles. 1957. Yes. Post 1957, neither the government or the legislative assembly of the Jam of Jammu and Kashmir, nor for that matter, the political establishment in the rest of the country represented by parliament, nobody ever thought of amending the Indian constitution to bring the Jammu and Kashmir constitution expressly within the fold of the Indian constitution. Well, it may not be necessary. I'll tell your lordships why, if I can, Malod, if I may humbly urge for your lordships consideration. The constitution for Jammu and Kashmir is intended to be applicable to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. But it is a constitution because it is framed by a constituent assembly. But it well, could, there be, could be the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir imposes limitations on, on, on the power, on the, on the executive power of the union and on the legislative power of an organ of the union, namely parliament. The constitution of JNK doesn't impose any fetter. The constitution of JNK refers to the fact that, you know, the restuary power would be vested with the... Uh, yes, yes, yes. I, I'm not, just the forgive me. I, I'm, I'm obliged. I'm obliged. It's a clear fetter. I'm just giving you a one example yes. of the fetters. But therefore, there yes. are fetters in the JNK constitution yes. on the operation of the union constitution. Well, this is actually the asymmetry. It's not necessary after 1957 for the constitution of the union, which was now the only constitution for the entirety of the country, including Jammu and Kashmir, which had acceded to yes. India. Was well, it not necessary for the Indian constitution to be amended to recognize some other constitution as an intrinsic part of this constitution? Well, what they did was... In the order, 54 order, I'm, I'm answering my Lord, the Chief Justice's question as an example. I'm answering the question, my lord. If your lordship sees the 54 order, the subject of stateless was omitted in its application. So what we have done is, with the help of the 54 order, we have imposed fetters on the constitution. My lord, that's the point for your lordships to consider. The 54 order, by saying that under Article 246, only Article 1 will be read. 2, 3, and 4 were initially Malod, omitted in the 54 order. Subsequently, Malod, 3 and 4 were omitted. Only 1 and 2 were retained. And Malod, in the list, namely in the 7th schedule, the state list was completely omitted. It has been omitted Malod, in the order itself. So what I'm submitting is, when your Lordship said, that there is a certain degree of denudation of power which otherwise is available under the constitution. Like, Malod, say for instance, entry 97, Malod, entry 97 of list one. 
but entry 97 of list one was in the 54 order deleted but in their constitution they have said whatever is the domain of parliament whether it is in the concurrent list or in uh, uh, the union list it is entirely for parliament to frame laws the rest of it will be the residuary powers of the state legislature so Malod, this is what i meant that the two talk to each other the orders that is Malod 370 orders and the jammu and kashmir constitution they both speak to each other as your lordships rightly said there are some carve outs for jammu and kashmir but those carve outs my lord are volitionally done those carve outs in the order of 1954 by giving them this sense that you have freedom to legislate in your spheres was a conscious carve out that is the point i'm making but that's the problem, Mr. Subramaniam, because as you rightly said that these were volitional carve outs. So just as the union has therefore issued those COs right from 1950, 1952, 1954, unless there is some higher constitutional precept which prevents them from modifying that carve out, what is there to restrain the union from modifying the terms of that carve out? The Unless answer we were to make the Jammu and Kashmir constitution a part of our constitution to impose fetters on the fetters on the power of parliament or the executive. Malod, may I endeavor to answer? It arises about concurrence, concurrence yes. and consultation, and they yes. have to decide whose concurrence was required in a stay in, at, at a point of time yes. when 356 is in operation. If you accept that... your argument. Yes. During 356, the operation of 356, you cannot exercise the, under the second proviso to Article 371D at all. Yes, you that is Manot. And they are then your home, your your yes. home completely. But Manot, I want to uh, add that that, three, yes. that during the time that the power of the union under the second proviso to Article 370D is not denuded when 356 is in operation. In that event. The union was clearly within its power. For instance, suppose 356 is in operation. All the executive powers of the state are assumed by the union. Who issues an ordinance in the state? Well, not the, uh, may an I, ordinance it, has to be issued in a state. Yes. Any state, state A of uh, the Union of India. Powers under 356 are assumed by the President of India. Urgent circumstances arise, an ordinance has to be issued. Can the President not issue an ordinance for the purpose of that state? Malod, the difference is between, Malod, a power to make laws. I'm, I'm, I'm submitting for your Lordship's consideration. A power to make laws. Yes. Malod, I wanted to answer your Lordship's observations in a serial order. The first is your Lordship's asked about the Jammu and Kashmir constitution being absent. It is not, Malod, it is absent. It is actually, there is a recognition of the position of the constitution because many parts of our constitution under the 54 order were not applicable to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. That's the first. The second is Malot. The Jammu and Kashmir itself has fundamental features, is acknowledged in a passage of Chief Justice Sikri in Keshavan and the Bharati's case, I'll point it out. Thirdly, as far as Malot, the power under Article 356 is concerned, it is conditioned Malot for a certain purpose. Your Lordships have already heard submissions on it. Article 370, Malot, does not, it is completely alien to the purpose of 356. Article 370, Malot, is a case where there has to be bilateralism in the very nature of things. If your lordships were to read the transposition of power in the governor and in the president, then not the net effect is that even though Article 370 begins with a non obstant clause, Malod, it will be completely, it will be rendered nugatory. Malod, the reason why special powers are there are only when they are conditioned by emergent needs. The scope of 356, my lord, is emergency. And, my lord, it is well settled 
even whatever is done during a president's proclamation in 356 cannot be irreversible. It cannot be final. Well, that is why it is an interim arrangement for the continuance of the constitution under 356. Under 356, my lord, it is not intended to be a reservoir for power, for actually exercising powers under the constitution, which have nothing to do with emergency. They have nothing to do at all. Then, my lord, I say that 370 is outside the ambit of 356, because it is not germane to the purposes of 356. And 370 contemplates And in my respectful submission, my Lord, 370 contemplates limitations on that power. These are, my Lord, express limitations. And these limitations, my Lord, cannot be obviated by taking recourse to 356. That is the point I'm making. Yes. These are, my Lord, express limitations. So, my Lord, I submit with respect 370 also, my lord, is a power which is coupled with a duty. And the obligation, my lord, under 370 is to act consistent with the very purposes of 370. And the very purpose of 370, my lord, was to enable another assembly to take a decision. And both of them, my lord, work together. That is, my lord, the scheme as far as 370 is concerned.